Uh, we're actually joined today by Brock Jenkins from Wilson. Brock, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Great. Well, I want to thank you for uh, taking time out of your day as well to teach us all about Wilson. Uh, and I will actually let you uh, get started here. Excellent. Appreciate that, Chris. Um, appreciate everybody who has joined and, like Chris said, taking time out of their day. Um, we, we do want to kind of get through some of this uh, a little quickly. I also don't want to do it, uh, you know, death by PowerPoint. So, um, you know, I'll probably be uh, covering a lot of things like Chris had mentioned. If you do have any questions, please ask away in the questions box because we will leave some time available for uh, towards the end to answer those and, and hopefully make this a very valuable uh, use of your time. Uh, so as Chris mentioned, my name is Brock Jenkins. I'm with Wilson Electronics. We are a manufacturer uh, based in Utah. Um, we're based actually in southern Utah is where we're headquartered. But just a little bit about, about, about us. We have uh, just over 45 years in the wireless manufacturing industry uh, in the RF world. Um, we, over the last 20 years, have been uh, focused solely on cellular uh, signal improvement, antennas and cellular amplifiers. So we're here in the U.S. We also have an R&D lab and training center in Dallas, Texas, as well as some more of our corporate and marketing offices out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, but when it comes to the cellular signal amplifier or signal booster uh, category, Wilson Electronics is a leader in the space where we hold about a 75% market share. And under that Wilson Electronics umbrella, we operate two core brands, Wilson Pro, uh, which is what we'll spend a little bit more time focused on here today. Uh, is our higher end solution, more of our high end residential and commercial product line. And then WeBoost is our consumer product line, which will cover our in vehicle and more DIY type in home solutions that you'll find in big box retailers and available online. Uh, so, you know, for the purposes of this, we're going to be focusing more on the pro where you guys are, are uh, you know, custom integrators. Uh, that product line really uh, fits fits your category and your customer base. Um, but, you know, along from being uh, the, the leader in the space, one of the things that's just helped us get there and, and just really makes us stand out is that, you know, we have really tight and close relationships with the FCC and with the Tier 1 carriers. Uh, we work closely with them. We're partners with them. Uh, they, they recognize our solution now as a, uh, a tool that they can use to help solve their customers, uh, you know, connectivity issues. So that that's just one thing that really takes, you know, makes us the leader in the space is just those close relationships. Um, and when we're leading the charge and everything in terms of new technologies and uh, new certifications and, and relationships with the carrier and, and governing bodies. Our mission at Wilson is, is simple. It's to provide a cost-effective means of expanding cellular connectivity to everybody. Uh, so our products will cover or they support all carriers. So the carrier agnostic voice and data support all users. You know, we aren't just talking about an iPhone. This is all cellular connected devices. So smartphones, cellular connected tablets, cellular connected hotspots, IoT applications, gateways, modem, anything that relies on cellular connectivity. And then all places, you know, we'll uh, be focusing more on our kind of residential and SMB products, but uh, we have solutions for building, home, large commercial IoT applications. Again, just getting back to, we want to provide signal for everybody. The problem, I, I'm sure we, we all have experienced a weak cellular data signal or voice signal at one point or another. Some of us may have already even experienced that today. Uh, it, it's a very common issue. You know, as cellular is becoming more and more uh, needed and more and more a big part of our day and beyond just the cell phone, uh, having reliable cellular connectivity is critical. Uh, you know, so when we are experiencing weak signal, right, you're going to have the, the dropped calls, you're going to have those dead zones when you're on the road, uh, maybe you just live in a valley or, or uh, right up next to a mountain where you have no signal. Uh, if you have a weak signal, you might just experience poor signal quality. Maybe you're connecting, but you're getting a, a weird echo, or maybe they can hear you, you can't hear them. Um, or maybe you're trying to Google something, you know, find an address of, of your customer, and you're on the road, and you're trying to get to your, your client's address, and you can't pull up uh, Google Maps or something like that because the data, data speed is so slow. When we talk about this problem, right, and we think, okay, well, what, what causes the weak cell signal? 
most people automatically just default, oh, I, I'm just far away from the cell tower, or my carrier sucks. They don't work. Um, I, you know, I need to switch from AT&T to Verizon or vice versa. Uh, really, the carriers up to this point have done a pretty phenomenal job of providing their coverage over the majority of the United States. Uh, you know, they, they do a, a very good job at that. Now, there are there are um, impediments to signal uh, that are natural obstruction, uh, you know, mountains, trees, just the topography of, of the, the country. Um, obviously, that's going to block signal, and, and certain rural areas may not have as much coverage. But, you know, for the most part, there's pretty pretty good signal. What we are finding is the biggest reason for weak cell signal for a customer in a building is due to the building material. Um, especially as we are getting into more and more energy efficient buildings, uh, they have low E glass, radiant barrier lining. They might have you know, here in Minnesota, uh, you guys might have, uh, you know, metal roofs, things like that. All of those materials block the cell signal from getting in. So when you think of a, a cell tower that's pumping up cellular signal at a high alpha power, having trouble getting that signal into your building, you know, the, the, by the time your phone receives it, it might be pretty weak. But what a lot of other people don't consider is that a cell phone is you know, bi-directional communication. So now your phone has to send that signal back through those same RF blocking materials and over that same distance to the cell tower at a much lower output power. And so a lot of times, you know, we, we kind of joke about the, you know, 20 years ago it used to be when the phone rang, you would have to run inside to answer it. Now when the phone rings, you're going to have to run outside to answer it to, to make sure you have enough signal. Um, if, if that's something that you guys have experienced, your customers are experiencing it as well. So that's just one thing we want to point out, both in the residential and commercial space, that a lot of times there's probably usable or pretty good signal outside, but a customer has no signal in their home because of the building blocking it. And the solution for them isn't switching their carrier necessarily, going from Carrier A to carrier B will likely experience a very similar uh, situation. And so that's where our, product, our products come in. So what are you guys doing right now to fix your client cell signal? Uh, when we talk about our solution, we are, you know, when we talk about our, comp our competition, I should say, our competition isn't another signal booster manufacturer. Hey, I've already told you we hold 75% of the market, right? Our competition is two things. One, it's awareness. Most people do not know a solution exists to solve their cell phone signal issues. And then two, apathy. Most customers just think, oh man, my signal sucks. Man, this sucks, I just gotta deal with it. And they don't do anything about it. They just think, hey, this is how it is. Um, they're they're too, uh, too lazy to, to try and find an, an alternative solution or they just, don't think there is one, and so it's it's the awareness and apathy, and that's where you guys come in. This is a great solution for you guys to to one meet a need uh, a need that is very very there, but a need that most people don't know about, and so that that's our challenge, right? You're already in a customer's home. You're already sitting there working uh, with them. You're you're mounting TVs. You're doing uh, high end audio systems, and it's a simple question. Hey, I noticed your cell signal's not good. Would you like me to fix that for you? Um, that that question right there can ultimately help overcome those two challenges of one, raise awareness that oh you you can do that, you can fix my cell signal, and two now you they have a professional installer in the home that's able and willing to uh, integrate that solution for them, and they don't have to do anything other than provide the the, the means to do so. And so when we're talking about that problem of weak cell signal, poor data speeds, drop calls, poor signal quality, the solution to that is a Wilson cellular amplifier. Um, right here, I got a, a new product that we have is our Pro 1100, which I'll go into in just a little bit, but a product that we're, we're really excited about. So how a Wilson system works, I'm not you know, aware of how many of you have already done our product, how many are, are you familiar with our product, but, you know, from what I've seen, people who are new to our solution, they hear cellular, they hear amplifier, 
or they hear um, booster and, and their minds kind of instantly go blank. They're like, no, <laughs> that's a, uh, that's out of my comfort zone. I don't want to do anything cellular. Um, you know, I, I believe the same was, you know, with networking, right? As that started making its way into the, the residential AV and commercial AV world, you know, a lot of people got kind of scared and wary of it. Ultimately, our solution is very simple and straightforward. Uh, there's three main components as outlined here. So the first one is an external donor antenna. This antenna would be mounted on the outside of a building. Uh, or, or residential application. Uh, we have a couple different styles of antennas, but ultimately you have an antenna outside, and that is communicating to and from the cell tower. It's picking up that existing ambient signal. Now that is the only requirement for our product to work, is there needs to be some signal outside of the building. As long as there's some signal, we can pick it up and amplify it. The more you get in, the more you get out, and vice versa. And so as long as there's signal, you would mount an antenna outside, you run coaxial cable into the building and connect it to an amplifier. The amplifier just plugs in the power. There's no need to connect it to your client network. It doesn't require any internet connection. And then from that amplifier, you would run cable to an inside uh, server antenna. And that inside antenna will then retransmit the amplifier signal within the building. And as you can see here on this diagram, here on the second floor, there's, we're showing another antenna. <coughs> Depending on the, on the application, these products can be scaled up, and you can have multiple inside antennas driven off an amplifier to distribute that stronger, more reliable signal throughout a larger space, allowing for better connectivity and seamless connectivity as you move throughout the structure. And so three simple components, outside antenna, amplifier, inside antenna, all connect with coaxial cable. So when you're thinking about, you know, all the other things that you're, you're installing in a home, the hardest part of the installation ultimately comes down to just the cable management. And you guys are professional, professionals uh, when it comes to running and, and, and uh, mounting cable, right? So it, it's a very seamless integration for, for you. It goes right into what you guys are doing. And, you know, it, it's a new value-added solution. One thing I want to mention about this, we, I had talked about um, the signal being blocked by buildings, right? And the cellular communication being a two-way street, our systems are bidirectional. So it will then take the signal from your phone or your device and amplify it back to the cell tower at a higher output. So some of the benefits here is it allows you to be further away from the cell tower and maintain connectivity. Uh, but also, now your phone does not have to work as hard to transfer, transmit that signal back, uh, which can help save your battery life by up to 30% since it's no longer having to work so hard just to uh, stay connected to the cell tower. So why Wilson? <clears throat> we talked about industry leader. Uh, we are a U.S.-based manufacturer. And we have U.S.-based customer support. And that customer support is really one of our key uh, value propositions. Uh, Wilson excels at taking care of our customers. Um, our, our client uh, or our customer support department is top-notch. Uh, we go above and beyond. Um, I used to manage our tech support department some years ago. And at the time, Jim Wilson, the founder of the company, he would walk through our department and at least on a monthly basis, he would make some comment to me or one of, one of my employees and say, my name is on every single product. You make sure you take care of that customer. And that was just kind of his, his mantra. And that's something that we still live by to this day, uh, just making sure that we, we bend over backwards twice if needed to make sure our customers are happy. We provide system design assistance. That's a free, a free service that we, we offer to help you guys as you are expanding into some jobs, especially as you get into larger ones. If you feel, hey, I, I need to make sure I'm putting in the right thing, we can help with that. Uh, there's a excellent profit margins, especially on the Wilson Pro line. Great training resources. It's a great value add to your, your solution and product portfolio. We also offer a, a wide variety of solutions. As I mentioned, the Wilson Pro and Weebus line, we, we connect everyone everywhere. We have solutions for virtually any application. Um, and then, you know, one of the core things with our product is it's a set it and forget it type solution. For you, you, you're able to go deploy it and not have to worry about having to go back out there in, in a week and tinker around with it and make adjustments to little and dials. Uh, it's a very automatic, dynamic product that, that adjusts itself to the signal environment, ensuring it does max performance at all times. And then we have a new uh, Wilson Pro Cloud. I won't go into that too much today because there's more coming on that, but 
uh, that is a solution that we have that gives you remote monitoring capabilities and a dashboard to manage multiple amplifiers. So I'm going to just quickly highlight a few products. I'm not going to spend hard time on, on the WeLoose, but we do have solutions for vehicle applications. Great for your customers. That's great for you as well as you have your own uh, fleet of installed vehicles. Maybe you're on the road, drop calls. Essentially, it comes down to we have two core solutions, uh, either a multi-user, which would uh, support uh, you know, multiple devices at a time within a vehicle or a single user solution, which is our drive screen on the right, so you don't have to get a cradle. This drive reach on the left is brand new, just launched. That's the highest performing vehicle product on the market. I'll give you about 60% further distance from a cell tower that you can be from our, our next closest product, which is the Drive 4GX. Uh, so those, those products are available and available in different kit configurations. But when we talk about our products work in the building. The concept is the same for the vehicle uh, outside antenna, amplifier inside antenna. It's just uh, different aesthetics and different you know cable type and, and form factor. But at the end of the day, the, the concept and the technology is there. It's, it's the same. And on the WeBoost Indoor, like I mentioned, these are more of your DIY plug-and-play kits. These are more designed to you know be purchased by somebody in a Best Buy or uh, an Amazon or something along those lines. So. Um, you know, for you guys as, as professional installers, not really something that you'll generally do a lot of because, you know, you're, you're going to have to uh, fight online shopping, online, uh, online price comparisons. Uh, but we, we do have these products. They're not for everybody, but they are for some. Uh, they're really just smaller area. Um, I have these square footages here of kind of looking at, you know, I, the way I look at WeBoost, if it's 3,000, 3,500 square feet or less, you could probably cover it with a, a WeBoo solution, but you know if you're talking about a high-end custom home or anything like that, or anything larger than 3,000 square feet, I always go with Wilson Pro. Wilson Pro, as I mentioned, is our our premium uh, commercial product line. So this is where we hit our high-end residential through large commercial applications. We've had a lot of changes, and there are a few more changes coming out over the next two months. Uh, to the Wilson Pro product family, um, as well as with Weebus. So stay tuned on that. There's a lot of great things happening at Wilson. Uh, but uh, Core Products here, Pro 70 Plus, is now our entry-level solution. Our Pro 1100 is the brand-new product. This just launched last month. Uh, it covers up to 35,000 square feet. But here are the key things. It has XDR technology. This product will never shut down to too much because of too much signal coming in. There was cell power close by. Um, it's automatic gain control. It's got a touch screen user interface that allows you to have a quick uh, picture of the, the amplifier performance and status. You can remote, you can uh, disable frequency bands if needed if you're doing any troubleshooting, things like that. Uh, but it also has a, a max downlink power of plus 15 dBm. Um, what that means is it can give you up to 50% more coverage than a Pro Summit in the same situation. So it's got a uh, stronger stronger indoor coverage area capability, XDR technology. It's a, a sleeker, newer design. Plus, you know, it's it's a new platform. It's a far more efficient and higher performing board uh, that we have inside of that amplifier. Uh, so brand new, $15.99 price point. That's the best performance in the market at that price point. Uh, something that we are very excited about. And uh, Capital uh, has a few of those products uh, that they, they got on order. So, you know, if you guys are looking have any jobs, the Pro 1100 really is probably that core product you should be looking at leading with in most, most all scenarios. Then we have our Pro 4000. Um, I'm not talking about every single one of our products, but our core ones, the Pro 4000, uh, you know, and talking with Chris, you guys, uh, you know, Capital's had a lot of really good success with this solution. Uh, the Pro 4000 is a unique product to Wilson. Um, as you can see, there's multiple connectors across the top. Uh, essentially, you have one connector for a donor antenna, and then each of these other four connectors are outputs or individual amplifiers. So you have four amplifiers in one form factor serviced by one outside antenna. Uh, that allows you to scale up to about 16 to 20 inside antennas, uh, you know, where you're now able to cover and expand throughout much larger areas and buildings. And as we show here below, uh, this product is available in a rack mount form factor. So, um, you know, if you are doing a, a high-end home, a really large custom home, and you want something that's, uh, you know, that rack mount capability, 
Uh, this has it just to give you that, that nice clean aesthetic look uh, as well as help with the cable management. You're not mounting a, a big blue box on, on a high-end customer's wall. Uh, so we do have that uh, available in rack mount. As I mentioned before, we have a few things coming. Look for some product refreshes on these uh, Pro 4000 units coming out in the next two months. And then system components, uh, outside antennas, signal meters. I'm going to talk about that meter in just a second. Uh, splitters, we have two, three, four-way splitters. That's what allows us to connect multiple antennas uh, on the inside connected to an amplifier. And we have a couple different uh, styles of antennas, uh, panel ceiling omnis, and our new low profile ceiling on me, which sits flush on the ceiling. All right, so um, we're, we're getting towards the end of, of the, the content. We'll open up for questions, but one of the things I do want to kind of uh, run through for the next two to three minutes is, uh, you know, I, I mentioned we do free system design. Uh, that, that's a service that, that we offer. Uh, however, for us to effectively do that and provide a, a uh, usable uh, building recommendation and design for you, uh, it does require some information from you as the, the installer. Uh, one of that is uh, signal readings. For us to really be able to provide a, a signal solution or system design for you, we need to know what kind of signal we're starting off with, one, to ensure there's enough to work with, and then two, to know you know, are we dealing with really strong outside signal, very weak outside signal? Ultimately, that's going to determine how much and what product we recommend. We have a signal meter. Um, it's, it's a very handy tool. It's simple to use. It's, it's uh, you know, not the, the most user-friendly in terms of telling you, hey, this is AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, or anything like that. It does not show carrier, but there are ways that you can find that out for the area that you work in. But you can see on the screen, it just shows a signal reading, an RSSI, and DBM, um, you have this reading, you provide us with outside signals, and that will help us know, uh, you know, what, what we can recommend. So, you know, that, that's an all in part of a site survey. So, when you are walking into a job, whether it's residential or you're doing a 200,000 square foot commercial building, uh, you know, a site survey is a critical piece to the success of a, a Wilson Pro deployment. Um, like I said before, you want to go and measure the outside signal strength uh, for each frequency. Ideally, you want to take these readings on the roof where you need uh, the external antenna. Uh, if you have, you know, building dimensions or floor plans, uh, having that available, keep an eye out. Look for, are the, is there a cell tower in the, you know, adjacent lot or something along those lines? Just keep an eye out. Is anything that might potentially cause some uh, overload or interference? Identify mounting uh, locations. Identify where, where you would have the ability of mounting an outside antenna. Maybe identify is there an IDF that you're going to be putting closet in or media closet for your, your uh, residential application where you can put an amplifier. Um, are there any restrictions on where you can run cable or do you have to use existing uh, pre-wired cable? What are the building materials? Those are the types of things that, that we are looking for from a site survey. Seems like a lot, but you know, like I said, we are here to help and we do have a building recommendation request form which kind of walks through that, uh, gives some basic information about the building, contact info, uh, you know, square footages, you send floor plans along with this if you have them, um, different, uh, if you have any specific requests or requirements you can put on here, as well as a nice easy chart that you can uh, take using a Wilson Pro signal meter, just easily go through the meter and jot down those signal readings um, uh, on the outside of the building. You provide this completed to us with a floor plan and we can help do system design for you. I just want to give you an idea of kind of what some of these designs might look like. Um, for larger commercial projects, if you have CAD files, uh, we'll, we'll generally use a tool called Ivy Wave, which is a, a high-end um, RF mapping tool, uh, which allows us to input our product, input the signal strength, estimated cable length, things like that, and it will actually give us a heat map. And so that's something we can then provide you so you have a nice deliverable to your client. Uh, but also, it helps us to determine, all right, do we have enough? Do we have enough equipment here to make it work? And whenever we do these designs, we are basing it off of the highest frequency with the weakest signal. So it's kind of our our worst case scenario signal, and we try to make sure that there's there's more than enough. Um, we, if anything, we try to overcover buildings for customers because we'll never have a customer complain about too much signal. But the 
flip side is if they drop one call out today to sell system, they probably won't be too happy. And you'll hear back from them. So we, we try to, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, it's right from the beginning. Aside from uh, IB Wave, which we don't do for everything, there's a, another tool we use called uh, Esticom. It's just a, another kind of a, a DAS type integration tool where we'll kind of provide re uh, recommended inside antenna locations, things like that. Uh, but what you also don't see is that we will actually provide like a, a layout to you, kind of showing how the different components that we'll be providing in this build material will all connect together. Uh, so you provide that to us, you get back a, a pretty much a good plan of, all right, this is what I need. Here's my list of equipment I need. This is how it all connects together. This is where it's estimated to be connected. Um, then, you know, if there are any questions during that process, we are able to uh, walk through it. Again, going back to our customer support and the resources where we're here to help, you know, we do have our tech support um, that's available Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 8 a.m. Eastern, and then it's open on Saturdays as well from 10 to 7 Eastern. Um, Capital is a great partner of ours. They have a lot of great resources and support as well. Uh, you can lean on them. You can lean on us. We just want to make sure you understand you have, you know, the, the Wilson team, uh, you know, backing you up. We're in your corner. We want to make sure you're, you're uh, supported and you're confident deploying our products. One of the other things I'd like just to mention is WilsonPro.com is a great place for, uh, you know, marketing case studies and videos. You'll have access to our YouTube channel there, which has how to's got video case studies, it's got product specific videos. Uh, there's a lot of great information that you can find there at wilsonpro.com or through our YouTube channel. But even more importantly is our training. So we do a live webinar, basic technical training, uh, every other Thursday. Uh, I believe that is at 12 noon Eastern time uh, that we do that. And that's an hour and a half long training. It's a lot more in depth from a technical standpoint. Uh, if this is something that you guys maybe have done in the past and, you know, dabbled in our product or similar products in the past, um, or if it's brand new, I would highly recommend starting there. Take that webinar. It's free. You can access it at wilsonpro.com. It's a live webinar. You can ask questions uh, throughout the thing, um, but it, it goes into more technical detail and, you know, like I said, an hour and a half long. Um, if this is a part of your business that you guys are starting to pick up a lot of traction and, and you want to make this a core solution, as many, many customers of ours have recently done, we do a two-day hands-on training in our Dallas training facility. Uh, that does have a cost to it, but um, it's $250 and you do walk away with a free signal meter. So you're essentially just paying for a meter plus your, your time and your travel. Uh, but it's, it's hands-on, everything from RF basics uh, you know, soup to nuts, everything cellular, everything cellular amplifiers, uh, site survey system design, uh, dealing with uh, kind of larger 50 ohm cable, things like that. Uh, so that is something that we do on a monthly basis that you can find the schedule on WilsonPro.com. Um, my contact information is here. I, I know that was kind of a, a rush and a, a high level overview on a lot of things, but um, hopefully kind of gave you a good idea of, you know, who we are at Wilson a little bit, what we can do to help how our systems work, and ultimately, you're not alone, and we're, we're able to help and get you started if, if that's what you're looking to do. Uh, so with that, if, if there are any questions, uh, Chris, I'd like to you know open up to any, any questions that we may have received, um, or if anybody has any questions now that they haven't asked, uh, let, let's go ahead and uh, use up the remainder of our time and get those answered for you. Definitely. Thanks, Brock. We actually do have a fair amount of questions, some great questions that have come in already. Uh, the first question we actually have here is, how does our system differ from a DAS system, which is more prevalent in a larger installation? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So a, a DAS or DAS uh, stands for Distributed Antenna System. Um, DAS is a, you could consider our solution more of a passive DAS. Most DAS will be carrier specific, and for it to be a uh, neutral host or carrier agnostic solution will require uh, you know, different hardware merged together for each individual carrier. Um, so how our product really differs from DAS is DAS is a great solution primarily for larger venues where capacity is going to be needed. We're talking like sporting venues, things like that, where you're going to have thousands and thousands and thousands of people um, 
our products play in that more your kind of middle prize and under space. Just that two to three hundred thousand square feet or less is our prime space. We can do more than that, but um, when it comes to our product versus gas, there's a couple competitive advantages that we have in that middle prize space, which is. Our product is much more cost effective. A DAS can cost anywhere from three to six dollars a square foot, sometimes more than that. Um, our Wilson products fully deployed in commercial generally are around a dollar a square foot, sometimes less. Um, it also, you know, there's a lot of legal jump, you know, hoops you got to jump through with to get a DAS approved uh, on an individual carrier basis, uh, and that can take, you know, anywhere from six months to two years. Um, our product is fully SEC certified. You don't need any carrier approvals. They already have blanket carrier consent. So you can walk on a job, do a site survey, and deploy a system in, in, in days to weeks. So, you know, that, that's one of the other advantages. So two different things. You know, our products don't quite scale up into those sporting venues where you're having to add capacity and it's fiber in, uh, but theirs don't scale down from a cost-effective standpoint uh, down to more of that middle price space. Great. And the next one, how can I be sure I'm boosting the right frequency? So our products are carrier agnostic. So we right now cover all the existing uh, cellular frequencies. Um, so as long as there's some signal outside, our, our system will pick it up and amplify it. Um, that's where a signal meter can come in. Uh, you can take that signal meter. If you're using a directional outside antenna, obviously it's going to be more prone to capturing the signal in the direction it's facing. Um, but unlike a satellite or something where it's like really, really directional, our, our directional antenna is about 100 degrees in width. So you, you got a you know pretty wide area that you're picking up. Um, you can hook up a meter to that and, and measure the signal. You can use the FCC website to determine exactly what frequency the carrier is operating on in your area. Um, that's a little bit more, more in depth, but ultimately, as long as there's some signal outside for that carrier, our product will be able to pick it up and amplify it, regardless of the frequency. You know, we, we have a broadband solution, uh, which is cu currently covering all of the uh, available, uh, you know, voice and 4G LTE spectrum. Great. Uh, the next question I have in the in the past, uh, this is actually from uh, Matthew. Uh, in the past, I've sent a few customers to WeBoost to buy the product and get the money back guarantee because they were not sure that they would see the improvements they needed. Uh, does Wilson Pro offer that similar try and buy program? Yeah, so that, that is another good question. So uh, the 30 day money back guarantee is something as a manufacturer that we stand behind. Um, with Wilson Pro, it can be a little bit more challenging because you know, like unlike WeBoost, which it's more of your uh, DIY plug and play the customer buys the product and they just if they you know for whatever reason got buyers remorse or it didn't work for them or anything like that they can just box it back up in the back whereas if you were to install it you're putting in your own labor your, your profession running the cable right um, and, and so that, that can be a challenge right where where the the return of, of your time or or that that install aspect so as a manufacturer, we, we do stand behind our product with a 30-day money-back guarantee, and we do that through our dealers and through our distributor partners if they wish to support that. So that, that's ultimately something that would be uh, you know, up to you through capital um, on whether that's something they would stand back. Now, we, we, would, we would support it on the back end from us, uh, but you know, there's the aspects of your install time, um, things like that. Uh, one of the things that we recommend you know, when you're doing a site survey, if you're doing a site survey, ultimately that's going to negate a lot of those potential concerns or needs for a 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, same with having it professionally installed. The majority of the time that you know customers are taking it back is that they installed it improperly, or uh, maybe they just they opened up the box and saw antennas and cables and got cold feet. Um, so you know th that is something we stand behind. We we aren't going to leave you stranded we take care of the customer uh, but it, it can be a little tricky to just have a blanket 30-day money-back guarantee for you considering your labor and the install I know that's kind of like not a super clear answer but um, we'll take care of it. if you ever have an install where you do install and you're having issues or maybe the customer is not completely satisfied let us know we will work to get that rectified for you is I guess ultimately what I'm getting at 
Well, I think that's a great uh, intro into the next question. Uh, the next question is, if we have a weak signal outside from the provider, are you amplifying a poor signal? What's percentage uh, or dB, you know, that we're looking at to be able to boost that weak signal? Uh, so if I understand the question correctly, is, is it more the, you know, what's the, what's the weakest signal that we can effectively pick up and amplify? Is that well, how you I'm, understand it, that question? It could be a twofold question. One, what is the minimum recommended signal strength outside? And also, how much DBM are your, or percentage are you able to boost a signal from outside to get it inside? Okay, gotcha. So, you know, generally when we're looking at our systems, we're, anything that's better than a negative 100 will, will be able to amplify. You start getting into that weaker than a negative 100 dBm outside signal, it's just your, your effective coverage area on the inside is probably not going to be very great. Um, then it just gets to the point where it's just too weak. It's not going to work. Um, so that, that negative 100 dBm is kind of our internal threshold. There's some caveats to that. It's just depending on on the particular customer's requirement. Um, but then going into what what kind of improvement we can see on our device is the more signal you have coming in, the more coverage you're going to get at, get out. So with a very weak signal in, uh, you're still going to see you can still see a really strong signal. Where I, I would say on average you see about a, a, a 20 to 30 dB increase on your device um, but that range from that antenna where you can see that reliable or that active increase is much less so the weaker the signal in the less coverage so as you get away from the antenna it drops off pretty quick whereas if you had a situation where the signal outside is pretty strong buildings just blocking from getting in you might have see that effective amplified signal of you know a 20 to 30 dB improvement on your device over a much greater distance if that makes sense. So so that's where it, really what it's coming down to in the weaker signal, it's just going to mean smaller area of amplified coverage. And and going into that guys, uh, you know, that's one of the pro reasons where that that signal meter, that site survey is so important. Uh, so you can go out and you can actually see how much signal strength you have outside. And Wilson has some great resources, Capital does as well, um, that we can actually t see how strong that signal is if you have that and get a floor plan and, and appropriately design an internal antenna system if needed to make sure you got that coverage with the strength of signal that's coming in from outside. Yep. And one thing I want to just mention about the cell signal um, as well, because it's on a related note, when, when we're talking about, uh, you know, signal strength in DBM and seeing what kind of increase we can see is just to put something into perspective with cell signal is, it's on a logarithmic scale. So a three dB increase in signal strength is doubling the power. A six dB increase is four times the power. A nine is eight times the power and 16 and 32 or so on. So, you know, every dB matters. And the same is, is you know, going in reverse. A three dB decrease in signal is cutting your power in half. And so, you know, when we're talking about a 20 dB increase, that's a hundred times the signal power. Um, that, that you're receiving, um, as well as, you know, how that translates when we're looking at the input signal is a 6 dB increase actually translates to doubling the coverage area um, uh, off of that inside antenna. So when we are doing that site survey and you're using that meter and you're trying to find where I can place a, an antenna and you say, okay, right here I'm getting a negative uh, 80 dB reading, but if I walk over to this other corner, I'm getting a negative 70 dB reading. I mean, it, even though you may in your mind not say, oh, well, they're, they're both pretty good, you, you would get much better indoor coverage with that negative 70 dB reading, you know, upwards of uh, four times the coverage. So um, every dB matters, and uh, that, that's for the, the signal improvement as well as just the overall system design. Well, and I think that also rolls into now, um, since we're talking about DB, DB loss, things like that, uh, the next question is, can you use regular 75-ohm cable versus 50-ohm? Uh, pros and cons to that. Yeah, great question. So um, I didn't touch on this a, a whole lot, but when we get over to it, I'm going to skip over to it real quick. Uh, when we get over to our products, um, on our Pro 70 Plus and Pro 1100, uh, we have both, we have these products both in 50 and 75 ohm versions. So 
you absolutely can. Uh, 50 ohm is just primarily, that, that's more common in commercial applications. Um, and, and so it's not necessarily that it's better. However, there are far more um, lower loss 50 ohm cables in, in that industry. But, you know, if you're using a RG6 or RG11, it can be done. Uh, when we talk about our 75 ohm systems, we actually really recommend RG11. RG11 is actually a pretty good performing cable and a performance very similar to the uh, LMR 450 ohm cable in terms of loss characteristics. So you can use that. Um, RG6, it, it does also work, but it's got a higher loss. So we will generally only recommend RG6 if the runs are under you know 50 feet or less. Then you'll probably be fine once you kind of get beyond 50 feet. You're going to be experiencing quite a bit of loss. And so um, that's where with anything 75 ohm, we, we recommend using RG11, especially if you're able to run new wires. Um, if you're trying to, you know, uh, use existing pre-wired RG6, if those runs are under 50 feet, then it should be fine if they're longer. It could still work, um, just depending on how much signal you're starting off with. Uh, but if you're starting off with a weak signal already, then, you know, you might encounter some just performance challenges uh, because of its higher loss. Uh, but one versus the other, we have both because we 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 understand that in the residential side, you guys already have the tools and, and knowledge and capability and access to those 75 ohm cables. Um, and then on the commercial side, the 50 ohm. So it's not necessarily one's better than the other. It's more just different applications, uh, you know, that that we're addressing. Certainly, into a commercial job, we'll we'll always lead with 50 ohm just because it's. You know, if we do need to run longer cables, um, you know, there are different cable types that you can upgrade to that have less loss. Great. And then actually that rolls into the next question here. Uh, in the, in your accessories you guys, that Wilson offers, do you guys have field terminating 50 ohm cable connectors uh, tools? We do. We do. So uh, we have uh, cable prep and strip tools and crimpers for both our 50 ohm uh, we'll support 100 coax as well as for our RG11 coax. Um, we, so we have both of those. On the 50 ohm side, you know, our standard uh, crimp connector um, technically should be soldered, should have the center pin soldered, which can be a little bit of a challenge, uh, you know, for infield termination. Um, but we do have a, we just recently launched a new connector, uh, more of an easy connector that does not require the soldering. Um, it does cost a little bit more but it's a little bit uh, easier for field termination and it performs very well. So uh, we do have that on the uh, 50 ohm side. Those are relatively new um, and we have the tools uh, to let those, you know, to be able to uh, uh, field prep those cables. Awesome. And uh, little, this next question is on uh, site survey slash outdoor antenna options and placement. Uh, are the outdoor antennas only directional, meaning should they be directed towards the carriers? How do you find that out? Site survey tools, those type of things. So we have both directional and omnidirectional. Um, usually in our kits, we'll include the directional because it's higher performing. So, you know, as we certify our product as a kit with the FCC, we're certifying it at its highest performance. Um, and, you know, going back to the more signal and the more signal out, uh, you know, a directional antenna does have higher gain, but we do have omnidirectional antennas. So if you are in a, a commercial job or if you're in a residential, it's, the signal is great outside for pretty much everybody. Throw an omni up, you'll be fine. Um, but in terms of, you know, finding the tower, there are some websites you can do, uh, you know, that, that you can walk through. One's called cellmapper.net. Um, there's some apps that would, you know, be a little bit more, uh, more of a Android apps that you can use that can help uh, determine the, the tower uh, location that are fairly accurate. Um, a lot of times, though, with our directional antenna, like I mentioned before, if you have a pretty general idea of the direction of the tower, um, it, it's a 100-degree beam width to where you can just kind of point in that direction and you'll you'll be fine. And then as you go, you can just tweak the antenna and measure the performance. And if you're using a meter, you hook that meter right up to that directional antenna, and as you turn the antenna, you'll see either the signal signal strength on the meter increasing or decreasing in real time to kind of help you dial it into the strongest received signal. So there's a couple things there. Um, there there are some tools in the works uh, that 
are we're shooting for that will make that an easier process but um that's still still a little bit down the road well and actually you knocked out the second question there um so the next question is we have is what about 5g what about 5g now that's a that's a great great question and it's a very common one and I just saw those reports, uh, you know, another carrier just launched 5G in a few cities. So 5G is still very much um, in development. You know, there's there's a lot of marketing buzz, a lot of buzz with the carriers to, you know, create the, the, the excitement around 5G. And, and honestly, it's a very exciting topic, very exciting uh, prospect of, of the capabilities that 5G will be able to provide. Uh, but ultimately, what what it comes down to is there's going to be kind of two uh, versions of 5G. Uh, there's the FR1 frequencies and FR2. So FR1 frequencies are going to be your uh, sub six gigahertz range, um, more similar to those Wi-Fi frequencies. And then FR2 is going to be in the millimeter wave. Uh, you know, where we're you know in the 20 to 30 gigahertz range. Uh, so when we're talking about like signal propagation and everything like that, the require the need for a cellular antenna and amplifier solution is actually going to significantly increase with 5G because it's not going to have the propagation capabilities or building penetration capabilities as the current lower cellular frequencies are. Um, with that being said, some carriers, you know, they're kind of rolling out some 5G in some areas. That we, these are all testing very small, limited markets. Um, and also in very small areas within these markets. And, you know, when they say Dallas, they don't mean the whole city of Dallas. They might mean a couple blocks that they have lit up. Um, right now, even handsets don't even have it. So we're in a situation right now where the FCC and carriers are still finalizing and buying up spectrum to to determine where they're going to fall in terms of the signal uh, or frequencies they'll be using. Um, as that all rolls out, there's for us, we will be developing products to match those frequencies once they get them taken care of. With current 5G, AT&T has their 5GE, which stands for 5G Evolution, which is just their LTE network that they tuned up and branded 5G uh, that has a little bit faster speed capabilities. We support that. Um, anything that's operated on our existing uh, cellular band will be covered. Uh, but with that being said, LTE is not going anywhere. 5G is going to be built in parallel to LTE, and LTE will be the backbone of cellular communications, especially for a lot of voice and a lot, you know, lower lower data requirement needs. Uh, whereas 5G is going to be primarily high speed, uh, high high bandwidth data uh, that's going to be required. So um, our products are going to be around for a long time, and as new frequencies come out, we will be introducing products to match those. Awesome. And uh, the next one rolls in, which I think is a, a great roll into going a little more into that Pro 1100 and explaining XDR technology. The question is, can you attenuate overpowering signal? Uh, I mean, you can put an attenuator in, right? An attenuator is just uh, weakening the cable, whether it's in the form of a, a small inline attenuator or it's in the form of turning the outside antenna away from the strong signal or if it's adding more coax between the amp and the outside antenna. Uh, however, uh, when you have an amplifier like the Pro 1100 with XDR technology, it's essentially it's got built-in attenuation. It's, it's automatically adjusting its gain, so it's uh, got automatic gain control, where as that signal is coming in, it's automatically adjusting in real time. Uh, one of the benefits there is if you were to throw in a, an attenuator in line, and if your outside signal or when your outside signal fluctuates based on time of day or traffic, things like that, you have that constant amount of attenuation, which is potentially limiting the performance of the amplifier. Whereas with XDR, it's always going to be at max performance given that signal input. So if the signal outside, you know, drops a little bit more, allows the gain to come back up higher and vice versa, uh, that's a really uh, core piece of our, our solution. Um, now, obviously, with certain scenarios, you you know you're, you may want to turn the outside antenna away from the the strong signals. So you can dial it in more to your carrier of need or something like that. 
but yeah, I mean, really with Wilson Pearl products, there are pretty much no situations where an attenuator would be needed. Um, we still have them, and it's kind of very few and far between where where you might need to use one. But uh, honestly, with our new products that have XDR technology, the Pro 1100, the Pro 4000, uh, yeah, we you shouldn't need an attenuator. Awesome. And uh, the next question, which kind of goes back to that 50 ohm versus 75 ohm and uh, and cable is, uh, what's the max length of coax? I know that you guys have some great facts on your website with charts on what to expect for cable loss um, between, you know, Wilson 400, RG658, you know, RG174, um, 50 versus 75 ohm. Um, I know I didn't see that in the PowerPoint. Uh, do you want to touch a little more on that and, and maybe explain a little more on what, what lengths they can look for and when to maybe jump from 50 to 75 or 75 to 50 and and go into that a little more? Yeah, absolutely. So with the different cable types, there's different um, loss characteristic or atten uh, attenuation specifications over you know 10 or 100 feet. Um, and, and like Chris mentioned on our website and in our catalog, we do have kind of that chart of the Wilson 400, the RG11, RG6 cable, and what that loss is per 100 feet on high and low frequency bands. Um, the higher the frequency, generally the more loss. Um, when it comes to you know what the max cable length is, there's a lot of variables that can go into play there, but when we're talking from the outside antenna to the amplifier, which is a very critical piece because it's bringing you know, the signal into the amplifier, my general rule of thumb is you don't want the gain of the in, or the loss of the cable to exceed the gain of the antenna. Now, that being said, if you had a situation where the signal outside is just very, very hot, you have a really strong outdoor signal, well, you can get away with longer cable. Um, and so when we're talking like the RG11 or LMR400, if I'm just giving a number, I will generally say, hey, try to keep runs under 150 feet. That's kind of the, that general number, uh, but knowing that you could potentially go longer and still be okay for certain scenarios if you have really strong outdoor signal and depending on how big of an area you're trying to cover. But general rule of thumb from the outside antenna to the amplifier, if you can, especially if your signal's not that great, don't want the cable loss to exceed the gain of the antenna. So that way you're at least coming in at a zero gain into the amp. Um, and then, you know, just any given length of the RG11 or LMR400 or Wilson 400 cable, generally 150 feet or less is uh, my recommendation, um, but you can potentially go longer. If you are going longer, you may want to look at that point on the 50 ohm side to step up to uh, LMR600, for example, or a half inch air dielectric or Heliax cable which has a lower loss, it will be a little bit more rigid and more uh, difficult to run and wire. Uh, so, you know, it's best just to use that cable for maybe long runs, kind of as a trunk line if needed. But, um, you know, if you are doing a job and you're planning on doing RG11 and you just know, hey, we're going to be, I, I have 300 foot runs, then it might just be a situation we need to look at, you know, an alternative of having multiple amplifiers. Or we also do have an amplifier called the Pro 1050, which has an inline amplifier solution. Uh, but that that can um, that's a more of a specific use case. So there are ways that we can go about it. But I'd say 150 feet or less for RG11 or LMR 400, and then um, from your outside antenna to amp, try and keep that that loss uh, to not exceed the gain of the ex external donor antenna. So. So what about RG6? Because that's what most people are, you know, most of us uh, as AV experts are using, either running to RG58 or RG6. Not so much RG11 anymore. Um, what what length recommendations would you have, maybe from the amplifier or from the outdoor antenna to the amplifier, and also max length using RG6 from or when to look at upgrading from the amplifier to the internal antenna. So uh, RG6 is going to be, I, I'd say, a 50-foot max. Um, just barring any 
unless you have a really strong outdoor signal, that's going to be the only caveat. But using 50 feet for RG6 is a very uh, conservative and, and safe uh, kind of limit. Um, from an outside antenna to the amp, if you have, you know, you can do 50 feet. Um, I think on our we lose product line where we include RG6 for those smaller kits, uh, we have them with 30 foot length. Um, with RG6, I would just have 50 feet as a standard rule of thumb. Perfect. And all of your kits do come with what type of antenna or what type of cabling and length? Uh, so depend yeah, depending on the, the kit, all of our amplifiers come as kits and will include cable. So a Wilson Pro kit, whether it's a Pro 70 Plus or the Pro 1100, that 75 ohm will include RG11. So be pre-terminated RG11 and uh, will be a uh, 50 and 75 foot run, um, plus a two foot jumper for the lightning surge protector. Uh, the 50 ohm versions of those kits will be a 60 foot and 75 foot um, LMR 400. Uh, so yeah, with the Pro, you're looking at, at those lengths and with RG11 or the Wilson 400. On our WeBoost kits, those are gonna be like uh, two 30 foot lengths of RG6. Perfect. Uh, and I know you've, you've actually said this, but you said it quickly. Um, uh, can you connect the signal meter directly to the outside antenna, then turn the outside antenna to find the optimal direction to aim it to? Absolutely, absolutely. We have a different adapters uh, available for that that meter. Um, we actually have it available in a survey kit, which comes with a directional antenna and some uh, adapter cables to allow you to actually do that, where you have the meter and a directional antenna to aim it. Uh, but you can certainly do that. That's a very great way to help dial in the system when you're out doing the installation. Uh, so you certainly can, um, and, and it will be effective. And like I had said before, that, that meter shows a signal in real time. So as you turn the antenna, you don't have to sit there and wait 30 seconds for it to refresh. It will it will update in real time that, that receive signal. The only, the only caveat to this is you can hook it up to the external antenna, and you can hook it up to the end of the cable right before the amplifier coming down from the external antenna, but you cannot hook it up to the output of the amplifier. If you do that, it will damage the meter. And how do you find out which band slash frequency is a carrier using? What tools do you have to find that out? The the easiest way is, especially if you're installing and you operate in just a general region, geographical area, you don't, you aren't expanding into multiple states or counties. Um, the FCC website, and we have this, we have these instructions in our user guide of the, of the signal meter. There's actually some videos on how to do this as well on our Wilson Pro YouTube channel. So I would highly recommend checking those out. But there is a way you go to the FCC website. And it would probably take you 20, 30 minutes of doing some research on the FCC website, and we show you how to kind of walk you through how to do that to identify the frequency bands that the carriers operate within an area. So AT&T will have spectrum in 700, 800, 1900, and 2100 megahertz, and they might be operating in all four of those bands in one area. And so, you know, you, you identify that, but the nice thing is if you operate in that same area, you have to do that once, write it down, on a you know cheat sheet, tape it to the back of the meter or something, and now and now you just know. So as you're going through, if you need to find the AT&T signal, you know exactly what frequency bands and channels to look at. Um, and so it's a simple, well I don't want to say super simple because it's you know it's a FCC website, but you can go through the FCC website and and find out those uh, particular frequencies. Awesome. And uh, the next one, if they already have an existing Pro 70 installed and they want to upgrade to the Pro 1100 to take it, you know, advantage of the XDR technology, all of the extra features it has, do they just need to go and switch out, take out the Pro 70, throw in the new 1100 amplifier, or what other steps do they need to take? Yeah, so um, you can buy a Pro 1100 and you would just remove the amp and swap amplifiers, so it, it would be as simple as that. Um, the only the only thing to keep in mind is 
per FCC rules, we have to sell the amp as a kit. So you aren't able to just buy a Pro 1100 amp only. You would have to buy a Pro 1100 and you get the antennas and cables, but you could just swap amps and, and make that work. Perfect. I, the, uh, the, the, next the, one, the only difference, and sorry, I was going to say, the, the only difference, honestly, going from a Pro 70, Pro 70 Plus to the 1100, the, the whole concept, the way it installs is all the same. It's just a, a stronger engine under the hood with more power and more dynamic range. Perfect. And here's one that's actually kind of a troubleshooting question for you. Is there a minimum distance of coax that the inside antenna can be between the amplifier and the antenna so it doesn't overload? Uh, they actually, ha this uh, dealer actually has an instance where my, his inside antenna is placed too close to the amplifier, about 15 feet or so, and it keeps overloading, therefore does not seem to help the signal quality in the house. They're using a Pro 70 system. So now there's, there's two things, there's overload and then there's oscillation. Overload is when you're getting too much input signal from a cell tower. There's a cell tower nearby, too much received signal. Oscillation is when you're getting feedback between the inside antenna and the outside antenna, where you're, you're getting that kind of feedback loop. Um, and, and that will show on the, the Pro 70 screen whether you're getting oscillation, which will show it's OSC, or if it's overload of too much signal, will show OVL. Um, if, it's, if it is the oscillation, it's the separation between the inside antenna and the outside antenna and not the antenna and the amplifier. You could have the antenna come out of the amplifier with a two-foot cable and be fine as long as you're not getting any feedback between the inside and outside antenna. Um, and then likewise, if you had multiple inside antennas, they can be close together. It's more th those inside antennas to the outside, uh, which would cause the loop. Um, and so you, know, you would want to look at what is the separation between the outside donor antenna and that inside antenna. What type of antennas are there if they're both the directional panel antennas that should, like we're seeing here in the Pro 70 Plus kit, if they're the directional antennas, are they facing each other? How are they facing? Uh, and look at that because what we need to do is provide more isolation between those two to allow the amplifier to either come up at a higher gain or to turn on depending on how bad that oscillation is occurring. Awesome. And uh, for extended distance, can you daisy chain amplifiers? If you need to go over that 50 foot or 100 foot from the amplifier to the antenna and you're fighting with line loss because it's RG6 cable or, um, or just the line loss of the cable? Uh, no, you cannot. That, that will be against the FCC rules. Uh, however, I, I did kind of allude to a product that we have called the Pro 1050, uh, which is a unique product to Wilson that we have a patent on, which features an inline amplifier solution. And essentially what it does is it will, you have your, your Pro 1050 main amplifier, which would be like an 1100 or a Pro 1000 or something like that. You have your main amplifier. And then it has a smaller amplifier unit, which will support up to 300 feet of RG11 or R for the LMR 400 cable. Um, so you, it will support up to 300 feet of that cable. And what it does is these two amplifiers communicate with each other over the coax cable to ensure that the output of that inline amplifier at the end of that 300 foot run matches the exact output of the main amplifier. So we do have that inline amplifier solution. It's not a simple one you can go throw into an existing system. It's They, they are all together as one standalone system, so we use it as a more specific use case type product, but where you could deploy that and you have a 300 foot run, for example, put that inline amplifier, which will require power, and then out of that inline amplifier, you basically have the same power as if you were coming right out of the main amplifier. So that can allow you to, to reach into uh, further areas, um, especially if you use, there's no way around it. Um, so we, we do have a solution, but you cannot take two Pro 70 Pluses, for example, and link them together. Uh, that that will cause them to overload, and that would be against FCC rules.
Perfect. And I want to I want to remind you guys as well. Um, Wilson has a great support team, great engineering department, uh, as well as as capital sales. So if you guys do have any of those jobs where you where you may be teetering on, you know, that standard 50 foot of RG6 or you know that 150 foot of RG11, uh, 400 cable, uh, you know, or just any questions in general, you know, reach out to Wilson, reach out to Capital Sales. We'd be happy to help you out and try and figure out, uh, you know, and, and get the correct solution for you. So, um, so as those projects come up or just general questions, you know, we, we love to chat with you guys. We love to hear what kind of projects you're working on and, and what your roadmap looks like. And, and we'd love to see what we can do to help you. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd just like to echo that. You know, my, my contact information here is is at the end um, of this slide deck. And don't hesitate to reach out to me as well. Um, you know, but the capital team is fantastic. We have a great relationship with them. They're one of our key distributors in this space. Uh, they have a great resource team, and, and we work hand-in-hand. Hand, so you know, between the two of us, we can make sure we get you taken care of and make sure you have the right solution, the right support. and Ultimately, that we're taking care of your customers.